Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. So today has, I mean, this week has been so crazy. Usually I start filming on Monday. It is Thursday night and I am just getting to it. Actually, I've been gone the past few days because I decided to take the kids on a little beach trip before school starts and before the crazy holiday season starts for me. I actually still have my swimsuit on. We just got back. There's no time to rest. The baby just went to sleep, so I have to work. I have to get some stuff done. So since I've been so busy this week, what I'm deciding to do is kind of kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to video some stuff I have orders for. That way I get my video in because I am really trying hard to post one every week from now on. So I'm going to video some stuff I have orders on. Um, so... I'm going to show you how to turn these paper bag books into something really, really cute. It's going to look good. These sell well for me. Um, and somebody had something special they wanted to write on them, so I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to turn these 100-year-old hundred bricks that I got from an old house in town, I'm going to turn them into bookends. And it's dark outside already. I'm just going to tell y'all right now how I'm going to clean them because I'm not going to film that. So the mortar is just like, it's 100 years old. It's just falling off. So all I'm going to do is spray them with a hose pipe and get a little plastic scraper. And this stuff comes right off. But these are going to, the transformation is going to look, it's going to be amazing. I love these bricks. I only have like a few left. Um, I picked them all up for free. They were tearing this house down. I think I might have a video of that, like one of my first videos, I went to this house. And then that was the one that I went dumpster diving and then I had to get a second shot and all that. But anyway, that's where I got these bricks from and they're really, really cute. I have probably like six or seven of them in my house just spread out inside and out of the house because they look really cute. Okay, and then this shutter. So somebody wants me to like distress this shutter. The only problem is, it's like, it's that plasticky off-white stuff, like not real paint. So I'm going to show you how to make this look like an old distressed window, even if you, I mean, old distressed shutter, even if you have like that plasticky paint stuff on it, that's not like real. You know what I mean? And then the last thing is, let me move this so you can actually see, this cute little tray. Someone actually bought it and I've been using it to stage all my stuff because it looks so, so cute. So I'm going to make one for myself that I can keep. They haven't picked it up yet. It's been here for like two weeks, so I've been using it. It's fair game, right? If you haven't picked it up yet. Um, but this is a ceramic tray. It's super heavy. So that one's like plastic or something like that. It's not heavy. Um, but this one's ceramic. It's really heavy. But it has a lot of chips and everything in it. So we're going to make it look cute. And then I'll be able to put it here to stage all my pictures. And it'll look good. So that's what I got. It's Thursday night. Like I said, the baby just went to sleep. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on some of these projects. I hope you all enjoy this video. All you need to do to get the books ready to paint is to rip off the covers. You want to make sure to get every little piece off of the end. That way you don't have to worry about putting several coats of paint. If you get everything off, then it'll just take one coat of paint to cover it and the more texture the better so i don't worry about if it's a smooth rip or anything if you have lines going on don't worry about it it's just going to add to the texture of the piece i'm using waverly chalk paint and ivory i find it's about the same color as the book pages and don't worry about getting it on the top of the and the bottom but you do want to make sure that you don't get it on the book pages on the side so you want to try to keep it on the binding as much as possible. You just need one coat of paint and then you'll put it on the side to dry. Next, I went on my computer and I just printed out words. I decided to do a cursive and a straight version, kind of like that Dun Ray look. I mean, the is it Ray Dun? Maybe so. I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, that look. So what I'm going to do is I sand it down. 
the book so that it's nice and smooth the chalk paint and then I'm using transfer paper and I'm just going to copy the words that I've printed out onto the book. Next, I'm going to take my paint pen. This uh, brand I like you can get from Walmart and I have the fine tip. And I'm just going to go over the letters that I've already transferred onto the book. I'm going to continue to do this for all four books. So once that is done, I'm going to take some twine and wrap it around. This twine I get from the Dollar Tree. It is in, a, in the hardware section. It comes in three rolls for a dollar and I use this stuff like crazy. And then I have some garland I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I'm just pulling the little twigs off and then I'm going to add it to the top and that just gives it such a cute little look. And you could add leaves, you could add, I've done pumpkins for fall, whatever you want to do you can add to the top. After I clean the bricks, I used my sprayer to spray white chalk paint on them. And then on my computer, I found pictures of the letters that this uh, customer specifically wanted to use. And I cut it out to look like the binding of a book. And then these are some bricks that I've done before. And you can see you can add stuff to the front to make it look like the title page of a book or whatever you want to do. But I'm using these to line it up so it's about the same height as the brick she already owns. I want the set to look like a collection, not like they were done at different times. So what I'm doing is I'm just Mod Podging the pieces of paper. I use white cardstock paper. You want it to be thicker because the thinner paper will not work, you want to use cardstock. And I'm using Mod Podge to glue it down. And you're just gonna put it down, rub it, hold it in place, and then you're gonna put a top coat of Mod Podge on it. And I like to put Mod Podge on the whole brick because these are 100 year old clay bricks and this helps keep them together. For this tray, I'm using Waverly chalk paint from Walmart in the color Mineral. I am not a big fan of gray, but I do love this color Mineral because I find it's the perfect shade of gray. It's just gray. You know, it doesn't throw off any other shades. Um, so for this first coat, since this surface is so slick, it's made out of ceramic, it's not going to go on perfectly. So the best thing is just to get a coat of paint on and then let it dry. And I'm not like, I want brush strokes, I want texture, so I'm not thinking too much about it. I'm just slapping the paint on. Now this is the second coat. For the, so for the second coat, you're going to, um, you're just going to put it on and again, I'm having my brush go all kind of different ways because I want to add that texture and when we move on to the next step you're going to see why you want to try and create texture and all I needed to do was two coats of paint for this one so like I said don't worry about that first coat of paint when you're working with a very slick surface like this it's just not going to go on great you just need to get it on there and let it dry so you can get that second coat of paint on. For the next step I'm using the Waverly White Wax. This is going to get us that cement look that we're going for. So all I'm going to do is slap it on, 
you're just going to paint it on using your brush just get it on there all the way it doesn't have to be perfect and then you're going to grab either a, a rag or a paper towel whatever you want to use and just wipe it off so what i do is i just get it wiped off quickly and then i go back and kind of do like a circle motion and kind of perfect it to get it looking exactly the way that i want it to look and what this is going to do is the wax is going to go into like the little crevices and then you're going to wipe off the the top so the top is going to come off and it's going to give you that texture look so that's why we want to go and create texture with our brush since this piece didn't have texture already So to get the distressed look that the customer wants, I'm going to paint this shutter black because when you distress, you want a dark color underneath and then a lighter color on top or vice versa. So if I would just paint this white and distress it, it wouldn't be much of a difference. So I just have a, a can of black Rust-Oleum spray paint and you can see I haven't sped up this video. It's super fast, super easy. Once my black paint dries, I take my sprayer with white chalk paint and I'm just going to spray over the top of it. As I say on every video, I love my sprayer. It makes my job so quick and easy. Once my white chalk paint was dry, I took out my Audible sander and I'm just sanding the piece and I'm especially paying attention to sanding the edges. That's where the piece would naturally be worn. So I like it to look as natural as possible. And what's happening is I'm getting that black coming through and then I'm getting some wood all the way down to the bottom. And then also a little bit of that off white. So I like that all of these colors are coming through for a nice realistic looking distressed look that I think this customer is really gonna like. This customer specifically picked out this shutter to go with this basket that she had already purchased from me. So together they make the perfect pair that will look wonderful in her house. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and please comment below what was your favorite project that I worked on this week.